Yo guys, what is up? It is Nick. We are back, and it's time to break down Wednesday's M. I almost said M. Oh my gosh, I'm so ready for baseball. I almost said MLB, uh, NBA DFS slate. It's a four gamer. A uh, little bit of a shorter, a little small slate here for us. Uh, we've got four games on it. We got the Bucks at the Magic, uh, Wiz Wizards at the Celtics, Heat at the kings and lakers at the warriors we've got a game at seven a game at eight a game at 10 and a game at 10 30 um washington boston and la golden state are the games on i believe they're on espn um and so we've got we've got television games russell westbrook came through today and got that triple double so we don't have to worry about russell westbrook narrative on friday at home against the clippers uh so thought i'd update that um yeah, yeah, I was right. Those are the two. Those are the two um, national TV games. They're on ESPN. Uh, so let's get into this. So once again, if if any pick differs on FanDuel, if I don't like it or I like it more on FanDuel, I'll let you guys know. Otherwise, pretty much my opinion stays the same. Like um, we'll start out here with with Bradley Beal against Boston. Um, Eighty five hundred. He comes in at. Uh, 8200 on FanDuel. Uh, prefer his price much more on FanDuel. I don't think I go there on DraftKings, but at 8200 on FanDuel, very viable option. Um, gets the tough matchup against the Celtics, but we have crazy injury news. Um, I guess I should go over that first before we get into this. Um, so starting off first, in Orlando, go to all players. Aaron Gordon expected to be out again. Evan Fournier expected to be out as well. Terrence Ross still out. Um, possibility of a giant Jonathan Isaac resting on the back-to-back -back they played tonight. Washington, John Wall remains out. Boston, we've got all sorts out. Kyrie Irving is out. Al Horford is out. Marcus Smart is out. Jalen Brown is out. And then um, Th uh, Tease is out. Uh, Daniel Thies or Thies or whatever you want to. He is out as well. Uh, so insane value in the Boston game. Uh, Miami, Drogic, and Wade remain out. Sacramento. Uh, Scalabissier um, is questionable for the game tomorrow, and he is the only injury news at that front. The Lakers should be good to go, just still uh, Ingram and Josh Hart out. Uh, and then for Golden State, Stephen Curry is out. Draymond Green is out. Clay is questionable. Andre Iguodala is questionable. Jordan Bell is questionable. Nick Young is questionable. David West is out. Patrick McCaw is out. So if you look at the Warriors, we have Kevin Looney. We have Omri Caspi. We have Quinn Cook, Sean Livingston, Zaza Pachulia, JaVale McGee, and Kevin Durant as the only fully 100% healthy bodies. Um, Chris Bruchet has been in the D League the whole time. Uh, there is a possibility that they may call him up, or the G League. Um, he's been in the G League, and uh, Jones was recalled from the G League, so they have him as well. But pretty much it is essentially a whole lot of Warrior. There's not a whole lot of Warriors. We've got two, four, five, six, seven fringish. If Clay, Iguodala, Bell, and Nick Young sit out, I expect Nick Young to play. Um, I expect. Um, Jordan Bell to sit out. Um, he's dealing with the left. He's been ruled probable for Wednesday, so I expect Nick Young to give it a go. Jordan Bell um, is probable as well, so I expect Jordan Bell to give it a go, but I was just giving the circumstances they were to sit out. Iguodala is also probable. Comes in with a fair price tag, so he will probably be a cash game lock. And Clay Thompson was downgraded, so I expect Clay to sit out. So we're going to actually do it a little bit different with four games. We're going to talk individually, team by team, opposed to um, uh, position by position. So starting off with the Milwaukee Bucks, with all this value, I think Giannis Antetokounmpo is worthy of consideration on on FanDuel where you can fit two studs but he does come in at a hefty price of 12k 1500 higher than Durant you're playing Durant on FanDuel but as another spend you could look at Giannis but with Andre Iguodala cheap as well on FanDuel I would expect you probably won't end up on Giannis but he's an interesting spend on FanDuel on DraftKings at 10 6 he's an interesting GPP play but that's about it for me uh, Bledsoe and Middleton um, it's kind of who do you think uh, will get it done I prefer Bledsoe on FanDuel um, because I think the point guard position is kind of weak over there. Um, 
And the shooting guard position is weak too, but I do like KCP, who we'll get to, and uh, I like some of the cheaper options like a Nick Young that I'll talk about later as well. So it's kind of a toss-up. I like both of them. It's just kind of a matter. I wouldn't play them both together probably, but I like one or the other. Um, I like John Henson and Jabari Parker as well. Parker should see low to mid-20s. Um, definitely can hit value at that price. Um not necessarily sure you need that value on this slate, but an interesting price. And I do like Tony Snell on both FanDuel and DraftKings. Um, not sure you need him, but he's got 23-point upside at his price. And uh, I always like to take a couple of shots on Tony Snell if I enter a, a decent chunk of GPPs. Uh, Brandon Jennings had a lights-out game. I'm not sure what we're going to do with this. He played 24 minutes in his first game with the Bucks. Uh Put up 16 points, 12 assists, and 8 rebounds. Put 46 real life, or 46 fantasy points up. Uh, wasn't even in the player pool. So he's an interesting GPP flyer. I might actually, I might take a shot on him in a GPP, uh, but not entirely sure. So that's about it on the Bucks. Um, I mean, you can look at Henson, uh, but once again, I just think there are better plays than John Henson. Uh, higher upside plays and, and better floor plays for cash. Moving on to Orlando, if Vooch, or if Gordon and Fournier remain out, I have some interest in Vooch against Milwaukee. His price went down from the price against the Spurs. I think he has some nice upside in the spot. Probably not a cash play, but a good GPP play. Uh, I love me some Jonathan Simmons. Uh, had a bad game tonight um, in the blowout against the Spurs. I believe that game is still going on, but I do like Jonathan Simmons tonight. He's a little heftier priced on FanDuel at fifty four or at 6400 uh, a little bit harder to swallow over there, but with the increased salary cap, I can probably stomach it in cash games and GPPs. Him being in small forward eligibility kind of messes up a lot of what you want to do over there, but I still do like him. Um, probably more of a DraftKings play than a fan tool. Uh, but pretty much the only two I have interest in is Simmons and, and Hisonia. Small interest in Jonathan Isaac. He has nice upside, and he's playing mid-20 minutes now. Uh, so definitely a guy you can take a look at. Um, I would keep a look at it. Um, I'll actually check his minutes now uh, and let you guys know. Uh, I'll get my evaluation on what I think. Um, he played 24 minutes tonight, so I would expect the possibility, maybe a 40% chance that he takes and rests tomorrow. Uh, but those are the fringe plays that I like on the Orlando Magic. Moving on to the Washington Wizards. Like I said, I like Bradley Bill more on FanDuel than DraftKings. Uh, the whole entire Celtics team is, seems to be out, so um, I'm not sure there's anybody here. Tomas Sadoransky had a huge game tonight. Oubre kind of screwed me tonight. I played him on DraftKings uh, as a last piece. I had 4,600 left uh, and just kind of picked wrong. Picked Kelly Oubre, put up 10 points. Um, that kind of stuff happens. Um I do kind of like Otto Porter Jr., but there's not much on the uh, Wizards that I feel like I need to force in on this slate. Uh, moving on to the Celtics, they were ready. Terry Rozier, 7,100 for Terry Rozier. I mean, he got there when they were out, but I, I can't pay 7,100 for Terry Rozier. I'm sorry. The guys that I'm looking at are Jason Tatum and Mark Eve, uh, Marcus Morris. Um... Marcus Morris has been generally safe for cash, uh, has a decent floor. The kind of 16-point game was kind of an outlier. He was pretty safe, um, even going past back farther than that. Uh, Jason Tatum as well, um, pretty safe, has some has some high upside, uh, especially with all these guys out. Um, if I was going to play anybody, um, I would look at a Shane Larkin. Uh, when Kyrie sat out, he played 17 and 16 minutes, and with Marcus Smart out, I would expect his minutes to climb into the 30s, or into, not into the into the high 20s, maybe possibly in the 30s, but I doubt it, um, and then a little bit of a possibility for maybe Terry Rozier to get, in. Terry Rozier may pay 40 minutes, I don't think he will, he'll probably play 36 or something like that, but there's a chance he plays 40, um, I believe Hal Horford was for sure. I guess he hasn't fully been ruled out yet. I guess he's still questionable. If Al Horford plays, pretty much lock Al Horford in uh, with all the injuries in them out. But if not, Aaron Baines and Greg Monroe, we'll see who draws the start. Um, they really hate Greg Monroe, but if he draws the start, I think I'll have to roll him and hope that he gets into the 20s uh, with Horford and Thies out. Uh, moving on to the Miami Heat, we've got Whiteside and Dwayne Wade out. Um, 
more on FanDuel than DraftKings. Um, I like Bam Adebayo. Uh, I do like Bam on DraftKings, but he comes in at 4300 which is the same price on FanDuel where you have to play two power forwards anyway. There's not really any great power forward options over there, so I do really like the idea of playing Bam Adebayo over there. Uh, and maybe not playing him on DraftKings. I think there's enough value. You probably don't need Bam. Um, I like Justin Winslow more on FanDuel than DraftKings, but he's small forward eligibility, so kind of screws you because you're paying for Durant and you only got one spot left. Uh, other than that, I'm not in love with too much. You could probably take a look at Josh Richardson. He's been struggling, though, of late. Uh, the, re the emergence of Justice Winslow has kind of slowed him down. Uh, neck tat James Johnson. I, I like neck tat. Um, he's both a play on FanDuel and DraftKings. He's actually $100 cheaper on FanDuel. He was on his way to kind of like crushing against Portland, and then he kind of like slowed down and didn't do much in the fourth and late into the third. So um, I have no problems going back to neck, neck tat uh, at $4,700 on DraftKings and $4,600 on FanDuel. So moving on to Sacramento, not a whole lot of interest here with pretty much everybody healthy except Scal. Um, and I think Scal probably tries to give it a go um, against the Heat. Uh, probably just a precautionary thing, sitting him out on the front end of the back-to-back. -back. That would make a lot of sense. Deer and Fox, I have some interest in. Um, I, I liked Deer and Fox the other night, or last night, and I played him. Um, he scored 32.25 points on awful shooting. He was able to post a double-double. Um, if he doesn't get the assist, you're going to get a crappy game out of him. Um, ignore the outlier three and a half, but like in this game, no assists. Uh, it's going to either take steals um, or it's going to take him getting some assists. But at 2,500 or at 5,300, you only need 25 points to hit value, but that might not be enough on this slate. So probably we'll just stay away from the Sacramento situation. Moving on to the Lakers, one of my favorite plays on the slate, which is weird because I don't think I've ever said this about Lonzo Ball, but he is my favorite play on FanDuel. I will be locking Lonzo Ball in on FanDuel at 7300 It's a great price for Lonzo, and I will definitely be locking him into my cash games over there. Uh, love him on DraftKings as well. Um, I don't think it's as much of a force in as as I think it is, but uh, at 7600 it's not a bad price. Uh, Julius Randle's kind of been lacking his... He, he flashed the 70-point upside, but other than that, he'd been missing value at, uh, at price, so... It's a good spot to go back to him. No Draymond Green. Um, they should be able to play him at the center against a JaVale McGee or someone like that. And he, sh he should eat. Um, it's a question of value. I, I, I favor Lonzo over Randall, but uh, it's pretty close between them. Kyle Kuzma, also interesting. Um, before I go any farther, uh, Randall is 7,400 on FanDuel, so I think he's much more in play over there. Uh, probably a lock and load at power forward over there with either Nectat or Bam Adebayo. Uh, would be my would be my suggestion. Uh, but Kyle Kuzma, 6,800, um, provides a little bit more value on DraftKings where he'll get that double-double bonus, and uh, he doesn't get a lot of blocks and steals on a regular basis, so he, losing that point from FanDuel, I, th I think he's more of a DraftKings play than a FanDuel. You get him at a $200 discount on DraftKings. Um, Isaiah Thomas is interesting, probably won't go there. Depends on how Brooke Lopez plays tonight. I did play Barolo on both sites, um, so my opinion on him will try to kind of depend on tonight. If he sucks tonight, then I probably won't go there. If he's a beast again, I guess it's not even if he sucks. If he gets minutes. If he gets in the 30s again, I probably play him on both sites again. If he doesn't, then I probably fade him. Uh, KCP, one of my favorite plays. Um, I think he'll probably go for 40 against the, the Warriors. I'll be locking KCP in on both sites if Clay Thompson is out for sure. Um, and then if Clay Thompson is in, I, I still have a lot of interest in KCP. Moving on to the final team of the night, we have the Golden State Warriors. Uh, and the Warriors, um, I believe there are like no totals out for any of these games. Uh, there's like no lines, no totals. Uh, it's kind of weird because of all the injuries. We don't know starting lineups or anything like that. Um, yeah, the only line we have is in the Heat and Kings game. The Heat are minus six and a half. And, uh, let's see, is there anything else? That's actually it. They're minus six and a half. There's not even a total out yet for, for this game. So that's, that's really interesting. Um, yeah, just the minus six and a half. But the, I would assume, I'd assume the Lakers would probably be actually favorited if it's just Durant. Um, 
I'm going to go under the assumption that Clay is out since he got downgraded to probable. I'm going to go under the assumption that Clay is out, and I'm going to go under the assumption that Iguodala, Bell, and Nick Young are available. So Jordan Bell is interesting because he's still working his way back from injury. So and he hasn't played since the Brooklyn game seven days ago from today. It'll be eight days ago from when they play. I don't think I can go there, but I think he limits the upside of some other guys. Uh, I probably can get behind playing JaVale McGee, and I can probably get behind playing Jaza Pachulia. Uh, probably Zaza more than McGee. Uh, Zaza exploded in the last game for 16-11 and 11, um, against Minnesota. So, so maybe I'll take a fly. I mean, if you put Zaza in, and then I really like Nick Young. If Clay Thompson is out, I'll be playing Nick Young. Uh, Quinn Cook, no fear in shooting the ball, uh, but he did not play well in the game against Minnesota. Just doesn't put up a lot of points. Um, I think he'll have to score in this game, so I'm okay putting him in the lineup as well, as well as Andre Iguodala, and then you know we have to have Kevin Durant. That leaves you 8,100 if you lock in those five Warriors, um, but there's also, there's also other nice value on the slate, so you don't even need to play all these Warriors. Um, I'll probably end up playing those three Warriors for sure, Iggy, Durant, and Pachulia. Uh, Grant, if, if Bell gets ruled out, I'll be like pretty much all in on Zaza Pachulia. Uh, Pachulia comes in at a really nice price on FanDuel as well. Uh, let's see. I believe he's, yeah, he's the stone minimum on FanDuel, so probably locking him in over there. Unless Horford happens to be ruled in, uh, that would change things up a little bit. Iguodala, lock on FanDuel, same with Durant. Um, that kind of limits the small forwards you have as options because those two are kind of locked in. Um, Cook and Young are both men or close to men. Cook is men, and then Nick Young is 3800 so a little bit above min price but still roughly around min price uh so should be interesting with the warriors we got to see uh if clay thompson is out and then we have to see if these guys that are probable if they end up playing or not but that's going to do it guys for this breakdown i hope you guys enjoyed a little bit different for the smaller slate and i will catch you guys uh in the next video peace out